Welcome to the 1099 ETC program. This tutorial covers e-filing the 1099 miscellaneous forms to Missouri using e-file services. Only the 1099 miscellaneous form can be e-filed to the state using e-file services. To begin, the pair ABC Payroll has been created and the 1099 miscellaneous form data has been entered. This is the main menu. To continue, select eFiler. This is the eFiler menu. Select eFile Services. Now click OK. In order to use the eFile services, you will create an account with a user ID and password. The user ID can be up to 30 characters in length. The password must be at least 10 characters in length and include one uppercase letter and one number. This information logs you into the third party system so that you can submit the information for processing. The login information that is entered should be for the user that is submitting the data. All fields in red are required, the others are optional. You can also elect to remember password so that you will not be prompted to enter it during the e filing process. The transmitter is the person that is submitting the file, not the company that is being submitted. Fill out all of the required fields and click Submit. In a few moments, you will receive a message that the account was created and or updated successfully. If you receive an error, correct it and resubmit again. Click OK to continue. Once the account is set up, we are ready to e-file. Select Create New Batch. Here are the e-filing options. You can only file the 1099 miscellaneous form. Select 1099 as a form. Then select miscellaneous as the form type. Next, select the services for this batch. Select e-file to state and then Missouri. Click OK. This is the transmitter screen. Filling it out is optional, except for the transmittal type. Select original file sent to the IRS and click OK. Next, check the pairs that are to be included in the e-file. Multiple pairs can be selected. For the tutorial, select ABC Payroll. Click OK. This prompt will display for each pair. That is why for multiple pairs it is important to answer the prompt for each one correctly. Make sure to select Skip if there is no data for that pair. Otherwise, the process will abort. Click Process. At this point, the forms are being checked for any errors or warnings. If there are any errors, they must be corrected or the batch will not be created. In most cases, you can still file with warnings, however, you can go back and correct them as well. If you add other pairs to process, select Process More Pairs. This will take you back to the Select Pair screen where you can select other pairs to include in the file. Be very careful when selecting pairs, if you accidentally select one that is already in the batch, the data will be duplicated. For the tutorial, select All Pairs Processed. Click OK. If there are warnings or errors, please view or print the activity output. The report will list the warnings, errors and the record numbers where the errors occurred. That information is used to correct the records in the W-2 or 1099 forms filer. At this point, the 1099s have been processed and will be submitted to the third-party vendor. First, the forms will be checked for errors. Click Quit to continue. The data is ready to submit to the third party vendor. The amount of time that it takes will depend on the number of forms and your internet connection. Click Start. If any errors are found, you will get this message. The e filing process is aborted when errors are found. You will need to correct any errors found at this point. To view the errors, click OK. This is the error screen. The errors will be listed at the bottom. In this example, the payer address is missing the city. You will need to quit the e-filer at this time, 
and go into the W-2 and 1099 forms filer and enter the city on the 1099 form. Then restart the e-filing process again. Close the error screen. When there are no errors, the forms will be assigned a batch ID, in this case, 1, 4, 0, 9, 7, 5, 9. Its status is unpaid. At this point, the third-party vendor has the forms, but until the batch is paid for, it is not sent to the IRS. To pay for the batch, check the box beside the batch number. Click Pay Selected Batches. If the batch is ready to be processed, confirm that the batch number is correct. Once Yes is clicked, the batch cannot be cancelled. Click Yes to continue. If the payment information has not been set up, the credit card information will need to be set up on a secure website. Click Add Card. You will be directed to a secure website to set up the credit card information. Enter the information and click Submit. Once the credit card information has been added, click OK. Select the credit card. If you have a prepaid account, select Prepaid Account and enter the account number. Click OK. At this point, the third party vendor has received and accepted the payment information. Click OK. Once the payment is accepted, the status for the batch will become paid and the itemized status will now include invoice paid. The paid status indicates that the third party vendor is processing the batch to submit to the IRS. There are several steps during the batch processing. The number of steps depends on the e-file service selected. Batch processing could be completed in a day or may take several weeks to complete. In order to update the status of the batch, Click on the batch ID. For e filing or the IRS, after invoice paid, the next status is filing queued, and then filing complete. Filing complete indicates that the IRS has the batch but the batch has not been processed yet. Filing accepted means that the IRS has processed the batch and they have accepted them. That batch processing is complete. That is the 1099 e-filing services process. For further questions, please review the frequently asked questions on our website. Technical support can be reached by email, fax, chat or phone. Thank you for using the 1099 etc. program. Have a great day.